Park City, Utah. This historic mountain town offers year-round recreation, from skiing in the winter to hiking and biking in the summer. It has an international arts and culture community, a renowned wellness scene, and an Olympic legacy. On top of all that, it also offers an eclectic dining scene with one-of-a-kind restaurants, serving adventurous, locally sourced cuisine. Here, chefs take inspiration from the surrounding mountains using fresh ingredients in inspiring, creative ways. I'm Locke Hughes, and I invite you to join me and meet the tastemakers of Park City. At this Main Street mainstay, Chef Matt Harris serves up new American cuisine with a southern twist. Many of the vegetables on the menu come straight to the kitchen from his farm in Midway, Utah, where we started our day. How did you first get into farming? What made you decide to create your own farm? So, I, you know, I, I think the, the intrigue was just kind of seeing what some of the other farms around it, you know, um, whether it's, it's Rustlin Aspens or Renui Gardens, going out and visiting those farms and kind of kind of intrigued my interest about, hey, you know, let's see if we can do, some, do something like that. And it, it kind of turned into a, um, it also kind of turned into a little bit of an educational piece for the restaurant. So these right here, this is a couple of the squash that we grow here. We, harv we harvested a couple of days ago because the thing, if you let squash grow, they just grow fast. So we have a couple of globe zucchinis here, a couple of different kinds of, of tomatoes, cherry tomatoes mostly, a couple of patty pans and some other things back here. After getting an up-close look at the farm, I sat down with Matt to try some of the dishes that have made Tupelo famous. You and your wife, Maggie, you're both from the South. What brought you guys out here to Park City? So yeah, we're both from the South. I'm from Atlanta originally, and she's from Asheville, North Carolina. And we actually didn't meet in the South. We actually met up here. Um, I was the chef at the J&G Grill. So Tupelo's food to me is Southern influence, but it also draws inspiration from the mountains. Yeah, I mean, it, I think it draws inspiration from the area, mm -hmm. actually. We're, we're always looking for new producers, and we're trying to draw from the flavor of the area. How would yeah. you describe the food philosophy of Tupelo? We, we try to source locally as possible if it's, if it's from our garden in Midway or anything regional. So there's a lot of inspiration in the surrounding areas, but I would also assume there are some challenges cooking at a, or growing at a high altitude and cooking in the small mountain town. Is there anything that's challenged you as a chef? You would be surprised. You can actually get a lot of ingredients here and a lot of locally sourced items, you know, whether it be honey or grains or lentils out of Idaho. You would really be surprised what you can find here. And then you're also famous for your biscuits. Oh, the biscuits are yeah. very famous, you know. And is there any secret behind these? Any family recipe? Well, actually, my share? mom kind of showed me the technique, and our pastry chef, Shirley, has kind of adapted that and taken it and, and ran with it. It's not really a recipe. Okay. It's more just kind of a feel, and, and, you know, if it's, you know, raining outside or something like that, you kind of just got to get a feel for the biscuit to make them consistently. And how many biscuits do you have to make a night? Oh, we during the winter, we probably make three to four hundred. Oh, wow. And you serve them with honey butter? We do, honey butter and sea salt. Um, one of the newest dishes on the menu is your shrimp and grits. Yeah. And what is your sort of spin on the traditional shrimp and grits dish? So our, our spin is that we use a coarse grain artisanal corn from Charleston, South Carolina, mm -hmm. as well as we use a uh, local sausage, a local andouille from Tooele Meats, and um, a house-made hot mm. sauce. So you get that little mm -hmm. bit of a kick yeah. right there. It's, mm -hmm. it's not too much, but yeah. it is a house-made hot sauce. So good. Yeah, so it's kind of just a, a twist on shrimp mm -hmm. and grits, mm -hmm. you know. And then mm -hmm. your beef and barley is also a signature dish. It um, is, definitely. What is your spin on the traditional steak dish? So it's, it's, it's a uh, sirloin that's sourced out of Colorado and a barley that is sourced out of Idaho. 
So we, we source a lot of these vegetables um, locally. The dish remains beef and barley throughout mm -hmm. the year, but we do change the vegetables and kind of the garnish to okay. fit the season. So when people walk away from Tupelo, what do you want them to feel after their dining experience here? You know, I, I really want to feel hospitality, a unique experience. You know, when you, when you come into Tupelo, especially, you know, all year long, but especially the winter, you come in, you come into a hospitable environment. It's warm, we have fireplaces. We want everybody to feel comfortable. And when they, when we, people leave here, we want them to feel fulfilled, you know? Like, that's... Mentally and physically. Me mentally and physically, <laughs> yeah. emotionally even mm -hmm. as well. So that's really what we're trying to achieve here. Matt, thank you so much for having us. Absolutely, thanks so, for coming out. Of course, cheers. Along with dinner, Tupelo is known for their Sunday brunch, accompanied by an abundant Bloody Mary bar. I hope this gives you a taste of what Tupelo has to offer locals and visitors alike. Perched above the Park City Golf Course, at the base of the Silver Star Lift, Jeff and Lisa Ward own and operate Silver Star Cafe. This is the perfect place to dine either before or after exploring the mountain in both summer and winter, offering stunning views and live music several nights a week. Today, I'm stopping by the cozy family-run restaurant to get a taste of their home-style cuisine. So tell us about the food philosophy here at Silver Star Cafe. I would say, you know, we try to prioritize flavor. We try to build layers of flavor, uh, regional American approach. It's a healthier way of eating. It's, it's multi-layered, a lot of flavor. Um, but, you know, we live in a community where people are very active. And so you don't want to have a meal and feel like you're carrying it with you when you go out to do whatever you're going to do for the rest of the day. So it's just great flavor and great way to approach healthy food. Yeah, because you guys are in this location, it's right at the base of the mountain, you have hiking trails, biking trails, a lift, a golf course, so how does sort of the environment influence how you cook and what you serve here? I think the, the way we cook is a function of kind of how we, how we eat at home, but also recognizing that Park City is a, a very active community and it's got a very dynamic restaurant scene. And so now your, uh, your family helps out and uh, it's sort of become a family run business. We are a mom and pop, yeah. kind of. Our, our kids were raised in this business, uh, even before we had this, you know, when they were in grade school, they would be at the, a restaurant that Jeff was working for, doing their homework, sitting at a counter, and so that they've always been around the industry, and, you know, we, we, we're foodies at home, and they've become foodies as well, so um, they've all gotten involved in the industry, and our younger son got a, a bachelor's degree in hospitality management. So what is the best thing about working so closely with your family? I think just we being like together, other. yeah, yeah, <laughs> yep. And this year we get to see each other and we get to share whatever's going on in our lives and um, in the case of our son working in the business, seeing him develop as a professional right. yeah. it just gives me so much pride to see from, from year to year how he just blossoms. This whole restaurant really has a cozy, intimate feel. I mean, I feel like we could be in a little alpine cabin somewhere. And so tell me a little bit about your design philosophy. We are. We wanted it to be homey. We wanted it to feel like you're a guest in someone's home and want them to feel like they just want to relax here. It's upscale, but it's not uh, formal, which I think is a reflection of how we try to approach food and our style of service with the staff, how we want to interact with the guests. So, um, we're, we're, you know, as, as we mentioned, we work together at, at St. Erickson Lodge. It's a very, you know, it's a five-star hotel and high-end fine dining. That's our foundation as we came to create this restaurant. It's like our foundationally, we were fine dining people, but we wanted to have that authenticity, I guess, a little, mm -hmm. little more welcoming, you know, and maybe a little more just personality. But like you said, it is very intimate, and it does feel like you're in somebody's home also because your kitchen is open. Yeah. And it's a very small kitchen. Mm -hmm. So how does that affect how you cook? Uh, I think we have to be a little bit strategic. It does limit us a little bit, you know, on, on sometimes on the size of the menu or, you know, how many items we have at one time. Um, so we are challenged a little bit with, with cooking space and we just have to be thoughtful in our process, uh, what we can do ahead, you know, and make the steps um, concise when, when the dishes are ordered.
So today I made for you uh, one of our long-standing featured kind of signature items, the pork osobuco. So that's a, a um, braised pork shank, which is kind of right here on the front leg, right? So we braise that for many hours, uh, then strain and reduce the braising liquid, um, reheat it uh, for service in that liquid, serve it with a coconut cream corn, and a fresh tomatillo salsa, a little cotilla cheese, and uh, some of the braising jus that's reduced and poured over. So it's really kind of a hearty, um, but with the corn a little bit lighter style. We also tried uh, new for the summer, our aromatic seed crusted mahi. So it's filet of mahi. It's got a mixture of basil seeds, fennel, anise, uh, some coriander, a touch of cumin. Um, that's crisp, crisped up in the pan um, and then served over a uh, fresh herb and tomato sauce that's a little bit more on the brothy side. Uh, again, light, so ba fresh basil, tarragon, and then we have some roasted sunchokes to go along with that. We also tried our pork schnitzel dish. So that's a naturally raised um, heritage breed pork, pork loin that we uh, slice and, and pound to make it a little thinner. It's a unique twist, I think, for, for us to make that, that dish gluten-free. So we used the gluten-free flour and egg wash and then uh, bread it with rice panko instead of um, bread, traditional wheat panko. Well, thank you so much, Jeff and Lisa, for having us here and letting me try your amazing, flavorful, wonderful food. This has been yeah. such a treat. Really nice to have you here. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you, guys. So, yeah. I hope this gives you a taste of what Silver Star Cafe has to offer locals and visitors alike. Stop by the next time you're in town for a home-cooked meal accompanied by unparalleled views and live music. Right off of Main Street, Chef Briar Hanley is reinventing Mountain West cuisine with a focus on seasonal vegetables. Today, I'm venturing into the kitchen with Chef Briar to try some of their small plates including their famous General So cauliflower and a seasonal spring salad. And how would you describe the food philosophy of Handel? So Handel is just kind of our idea of crafting by hand and how we handle ingredients with care and passion and little manipulation, really let, letting the ingredients shine. Really uh, vegetally driven, cook with the seasons, uh, with what our farmers, ranchers, artisans are bringing in the door. The menu changes daily, so with that being said, it, we're not really tied down to any specific genre of cooking. Can you give some specific examples of foods you source locally? Right now is more uh, wild stuff. Mm -hmm. So with spring, think like asparagus and ramps and uh, wild onions, calcots, morel mushrooms. We really try and utilize what's coming in the door. And so tell me about the dishes that you're going to make today. And one of them was a very spring-ish dish, right? With asparagus, yeah. peas. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, one of the dishes I'm going to make for you today is really wildly inspired, springtime inspired. So uh, like I said, asparagus, we're going to have some sugar snap peas on there. It's going to be a nettle emulsion. So um, sting nettles, which came locally, just our back back door, you know, the hills. Of, I'm, I'm not going to give any secrets away of what, <laughs> where we find them, but uh, this time of year, yeah, sting nettles are popping up all over the place. The other dish I'm going to do for you is uh, our General Sal's cauliflower. So when we first opened Handle, we opened with a buffalo cauliflower. It was kind of like our play on you know, buffalo chicken wings and... Uh, but with cauliflower, so treated the same as chicken wings with a carrot and celery salad. So that's gone away, and we've brought our General Sow's cauliflower from Salt Lake City. So kind of, you know, we always have some sort of fried cauliflower on the menu, and uh, this one's been around at HSL, our sister restaurant, since uh, pretty much since day one. So a little uh, sriracha bin on there. It's uh, General Sow sauce, uh, cornstarch, and... Um, coconut milk fried cauliflower, and we just toss in a bit of uh, General Sal's. The last and final dish is Romanesco. So similar to cauliflower, kind of like a cross between broccoli and cauliflower. Uh, so we just lightly toss that in some herb oil and salt and then grill it. And it's kind of really like screams the way I cook. 
when you think of springtime and summer, let's let's throw everything on the grill. It's like that's what I do. So Romanesco, lightly grilled, and then we toss it with some chicories, which include frisé, treviso, and uh, radicchio. And then you have some dates in there to kind of sweeten it up, some medjool dates, and a marcona almond puree, and then a bit of uh, marcona almonds just chopped on top for uh, a little crunch. Do you feel like you cook the same way at home as you do here at the restaurant? My wife and I really enjoy uh, entertaining and like, there's no better way than to um, around a, a great meal. So uh, with that being said, yeah, I tend to cook just like I do in the kitchen. What do you want the dining experience at Handle to be like? When people walk out the door, what do you want them to sort of feel? You know, I really want them to kind of leave like knowing that they got to know maybe our farmers. And, and I want people to like, when a dish gets put down in front of them to, I guess, to say, wow, that's first, first of all, amazing. And second of all, it tastes great. And third of all, like, like maybe they can go and relay, you know, where that vegetable came from and a little story about it. And that excites me. I hope this gives you a taste of what Handel has to offer locals and visitors alike. Stop by the next time you're in town for a creative, veggie-centric meal with drinks designed to please. Tucked into the Snow Creek Shopping Center, Twisted Fern features a seasonally driven menu with dishes ranging from local elk to homemade fresh pastas. Chef Adam Ross uses a keen eye to find what's fresh and in season, resulting in elevated mountain cuisine with a twist. So tell me about the name Twisted Fern. Is it sort of to be like a play on vegetables or? It's a homage to fiddleheads, which are, they're in season for about three, five weeks out of the year. And it's the, about the first like three inches of a shoot of a, of a fern. There's two ferns that are edible, um, the lady fern out of the west coast and the ostrich fern out of the east coast. And they just have this beautiful, just woody, slight asparagus um, flavor to them. They're delicious and one of my favorite foraged veggies. Tell us a little bit about the food philosophy behind Twisted Fern. Uh, keep it simple. We don't need to overcomplicate food. Fresh, kind of taking what I can get seasonally here in this, in either Utah or a kind of Intermountain West, mm -hmm. Arizona to Montana, a little bit of Pacific Northwest. If it's coming from South America, we can find something here to use instead. What are some examples of some things you source locally? From Park City, a lot of my salad greens right now. They're coming from arugula, spring mixes, uh, microgreens. They're coming from Orem, they're coming from Heber, Park City itself. I've got a couple of other farms that I'm working on, so hopefully in the next few weeks I'll have a few more names to add to the list. And Twisted Fern sounds like it might be a vegetarian-centric menu, but you also have meat, so yeah. tell yep. me a little bit about that side of the menu. The meat and fish that I use right now, I've got uh, an elk dish that I'll be preparing later today. That is coming from about three hours south of here, southern Utah. There's about six ranches producing truly Utah elk right now. The uh, trout that I'm using, it's a rainbow trout out of just around the Kersherum, Brook Springs area, which is also about three, three and a half hours south. So today we'll be making a, it'll be a seared elk tri-tip and it's going with a black garlic vinaigrette. Another dish I'll be producing today is the farinata appetizer. It's an Italian chickpea pancake. And then I top it with a smashed pea, English pea, chili vinegar, roasted morel mushrooms, pea shoots, and um, some roasted cauliflower. Third dish today is going to be a fettuccine pasta. It'll be a house-made pasta with a green garlic and arugula pesto, some crushed pecans, some fresh baby artichokes, artichoke hearts, and some Asiago. In terms of the dining experience, what do you hope people to take away? What do you want people to feel like after they eat here? I want you to come out with friends, have a nice bottle of wine, cocktail, enjoy a nice meal, and then go dancing, go for a bike ride. Like, your day shouldn't be over because you just finished lunch or dinner. Do you find that people are ever surprised at 
you know, how delicious vegetables can be or how lighter food can not sacrifice flavor. It's always fun having that conversation at the end of the meal and this, this person who's just, you like typically, it's like I have to have steak for dinner and I've just had three courses with no meat in it and I am ecstatic. And it's about getting people to like not think of oh, today I'm eating vegan, today I'm eating vegetarian or whatever. It's just like, this looks good, I'm gonna order this. I hope this gives you a taste of what Twisted Fern has to offer locals and visitors alike. Stop by the next time you're in town for seasonal dishes that prove veggies can take a starring role in both dinner and drinks. In a historic space at the top of Main Street, Chef John Murko and his team bring the outdoors in by cooking over an open wood-burning fire. The restaurant's warm ambiance is emphasized by both its new American cuisine and its turn-of-the-century industrial decor. Here, firewood is more than just the name. It's the main ingredient. If you can tell me a little bit about how you got to Park City and what brought you here originally. Absolutely. Um, Park City's really in my heart. I, I was uh, on a family ski vacation, as probably the story been told before by many. Fell in love with the town. When I graduated culinary school, I moved back and I've been here ever since. And so you've worked at other restaurants before Firewood? Quite a journey while I've been here in Park City. I've, I've opened um, close to 20 restaurants in this town. Finally, for myself, opened up uh, with this was a, an old Italian restaurant of 30 years closed and uh, I saw a great opportunity to be part of the heart of Main Street and opened up a concept that I've been wanting to do for many a years. Tell us a little bit about the cooking philosophy and the concept of Firewood. I have a place in Southern Utah that I, I go to a lot with my family and it's uh, very remote, it's in the National Forest. The only way method of cooking down there is it's over wood. So through the years, I've, I really enjoyed cooking with Dutch oven and then rotisserie and building pits and cooking over it. And I thought it would be great if I could scale this into a commercial setting. This concept here is all wood cooking. So there's no, no, no electricity cooking or, or gas, it's all over wood. It takes a lot of different styles of methods, you know, cooking with baskets or cast iron, not your traditional methods of cooking. So tell me about the wood that you use. Do you have to bring it in throughout the night? Because I mean, there's a lot of wood back there. Oh yeah. <laughs> Cherry, apple, fruit woods are my favorite choice, but I also mix them with some hardwoods. I mix them with almond wood and oak. Um, because what you're looking for is not to cook directly on flames. You want to cook you know, over coals. And do you draw inspiration from your environment here in Park City for your menu? I think it's it's really important for today's world is to, to cook in your region. And you know, you're in the mountains and one of our very popular dishes in the, in the winter months is elk. Mm. Um, we were serving, there was a local lamb last winter and you know, forever riding my mountain bikes around um, up in the mountains here, you would see all these, this lamb and you would, hey, it's on the menu here, so. Um, <laughs> Those exact that's, lambs or? Yeah, that's a, and that's what's so neat. The Ascothorpe family uh, actually okay. sells lamb. Um, and that to me, yeah, trout, of course, that's what we should have on our menu, not something that's coming from a far away place that travels so long and then the freshness is also never as good as cooking in your region and following the seasons. I have the scallop that I want to show you um, with peas and wild mushrooms right now, seasonal wild mushrooms. So, um, and it has a, a, a sauce made of Parmesan and cauliflower, which is interesting. And that's with zucchini noodles that we just roast in a basket over the coals. With you being from New York, I had to do something from Manhattan, it's called a Manhattan cut. So that is a, a New York where you trim it all the way down to the, just the heart of the okay. steak. But I take all the trimmings and I render it and I actually cook the potatoes in the rendering mm. of all the trimmings from the New York. And uh, a little play on um, a horseradish sauce. Mm. I do a horseradish creme fraiche, so. And Yum. that's. Uh, that sounds so good. So <laughs> that and some excited. razor clams. It's okay. clam season yeah. right now. And I remember when I was moving to Utah, 
I went all the way to the West Coast and um, it was razor clam season. I dug for razor clam. So I always had that in my mind and I always think of this time of year when they're in season. We're gonna do several dishes. We're gonna do the scallop New York that we talked about, but also those razor clams and our traditional pork belly that is also another item that has been on the menu since we've opened. And tell me a little bit about the nickel bar downstairs. Where I grew up outside in uh, Detroit, there was a um, it was a old hotel that had uh, penny floors in the bathroom. So we always remember that as a kid, and we wanted to um, bring a little bit of that element to our bar top. So we covered the top of the bar with all nickels. It's a great story um, if you can find the Indian heads, or if you can find the uh, tell us how many nickels there are, we'll get you around a drink. So. Well, um, never happened yet, but... Oh, I'm gonna have to try that. <laughs> After hearing his story, I sat down to savor the firewood experience for myself. Mm. That is the way to do it. I hope this gives you a taste of what firewood has to offer locals and visitors alike. Stop by this hot spot next time you're in town for a taste of live fire cooking. <laughs>